I know what the staff report says, but can you just, it seems a little challenging. It, it was unanimous. Um, our recommendation went forth with approval, and basically we looked at the area and saw there were site-built homes, double-wide, single-wide, and we felt that the addition of, I've got to be excused, sure. Um, the addition of two single wives will be out of scale with the neighborhood. That's basically what we felt. Um, I'm no, no. with the fact that, you know, the zoning, the history of zoning for that whole area has been approval, not allowed, you can do it. It's, it's, it's been ongoing. Consistent. Yes. What about, you said, you don't have an issue with double wide, but you do with single wide. Yes. That's the option. And because in the origin zoning, you can have um, a site built house, we put in design standards for manufactured homes. A site built house is typically more than 21 feet wide, it has the overhang. So if you decided to put a manufactured home in that area, we want it to look as much like that site built house as possible. That's why we restricted the vinyl siding and just the <coughs> metal siding. We restricted things like that because we want it to look as much as a site built house as possible. Although we couldn't prohibit manufactured homes, the, our consultant told us we could put in design standards to make it look as closely as a site built home as possible. So what's the thought process, just entertaining you? Mm -hmm. Uh, you can use vinyl outsiding for an exterior material, but you can't use it for a skirt material. Has there been any discussion about that? I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, a site built home that's on a monolithic slab that's only eight inches tall, you know, and vinyl siding that runs all the way to the ground, essentially covered, you know, yeah, you can see an eight inch foundation, which is our standard, but you know, grass and pine straw covers up that foundation. So essentially you see vinyl siding that runs basically to the ground. And I mean, I'm not trying to I'm just, saying. just say one way or another. I'm just thinking, I just don't understand the logic between the, you know, with the design mm -hmm. criteria with being able to allow exterior siding to be vinyl but not skirting. Is the vinyl, is the vinyl skirting um, the same as the vinyl siding? And I guess Animals the thoughts and the typical vinyl siding you see, and I think Mr. Rusty had a picture, is that white and it looks rather inexpensive versus the um, skirting you saw that looks like a fake brick. Um, that was the thought process to, to do away with that light, inexpensive looking skirting. The other thing is requiring, again, I'm not saying one way or another, but requiring a brick skirt, and I know we're not requiring it, but it's just an option. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wonder what the, I guess the conversation another time, but I wonder what the, what the, what the life expectancy of a, of a mobile home is in this area as far as coming in and out. I mean, you know, you spend the time and money building a brick foundation around something that's essentially mobile. I mean, you know, by that's done. And again, just, just trying to get it to look as closely to a house because your house has the bridge of concrete. So we wanted the manufactured home to kind of have that same look. With all the different changes through the years since the 50s, mm -hmm. um, have most of these zoning changes and requirements been put forth to try to upgrade this area to, to Make it nicer than you remember. Yes, that was the intent to make it nice, make it blend, to make it. <coughs> yes. Not to bring it down. And we have a number <coughs> of these, um, and it's, it's worth the conversation. We have a number of these neighborhoods in Lowndes County. Um, I can name several of them right now. 
that there, the, the zoning that was in place, which the MH zoning that allowed for man manufactured homes, you will receive deleted that zoning. Now you have these non, a lot of these non conformances. Um, I do expect to see more of these come, come before you all if we don't do anything about it. I do see that now. Okay, technical question. The variance that, he's, that they're requesting is for the design standards. Mm -hmm. There's no variance being requested to put a single wide instead of a double wide? You would see that under the 21. Um, you, you do not find single wide that are 21 feet wide. They're, right, 14, they're, they're 14, 15, 16 feet wide. Which is what the variance is. Um, we don't have per se double wide, single wide okay, per se. Okay. We don't have that language per se. Uh, okay, here, yeah, I got you. Mm -hmm. I got you. All right, <coughs> any other any other questions or discussions? At the same time after before we move any further, the board can <coughs> do any or all of these or none of these. We don't have to do every one of them that's being requested. The, the width, the roof, fish, overhang, exterior siding, skirting. They are all individual and can be either allowed or not allowed per board motion. I, I have a question. Sure. In that neighborhood, how many of the homes, what percentage are owner occupied? I just want a percentage. Half of the people that live there own the home? More than half. More than half. These are mostly rental trailers these people live in. They come and they go, they come and they go. The police are there constantly at the one on the corner of Sims and Alexandria. Your name's it's sir? a Clifford McLaughlin. Can you have the microphone? My name is Clifford McLaughlin. I live at 2761 Alexandria. Right across from this lot, he's trying to develop. It's constant. It's they call on my street Alexander a street of shame. Everybody's on welfare. Nobody works. They do drugs night and day. The police are there constantly. I've had them on that corner house. It's a trailer. Okay. They, so half of the houses in the neighborhood are rentals. They're owned. I own mine. Mr. Cooper owns his. There's a lot of nice houses that are owned. Been there for years. Okay. I bought mine for the drug house. They burned it down. The one next door was a meth house. It burned down. Some Mexicans bought that to a Don Brotherton. Brotherton goes in there and buys all these slum houses and he puts them to these low class people and that's what you have there. My house looks like a garbage dump. My house right now, you can ask Mr. Cooper. It's a 500% turnaround. I don't need more trailer trash coming across the street because that's what they bring these people in this single wide constantly drugs over there all the time. Like I say, the police can tell you that. It's nonstop. She's on the welfare. She did everything section eight totally. It's just a street sir, of shame. Sir, this is something that the board, this board can Well, I'm just saying what say you asked what was living there and I'm telling you. These the people are renting these places the that question, come and go. The question was how many of people own them and live in them? More than half of us own our house. These people come and go. They don't own them. I understand rentals are transient in nature. Yeah. But as far as who they rent to and any law enforcement issues, that's something this board can. Well, operate. like I say, when they move in and the trouble starts, I'm going to have the there every night. And they can enter the domain and then they'll lose their property. That's all I have to say. Yes, sir. I am speaking of the Med Mud Creek Mud Swamp area in that area. That airport is trash. You'll show up there when you cross the Mud Swamp. And look, drive every street in there and watch. Most of the houses are demolished, not fit to live in, and that they just run out of there. You wouldn't want to live in one. I bet you would. Sir, I understand, uh, and I totally I agree, but it. that's not something this board can address. They can address wait. I know what they can address. They can address the situation of who and what is being put in there now 
We cannot address who. I, I know you can't. We can they, address they, what, we're, what we're they can put in there. We are here now talking about who. But no, no. We, we are not talking about we, who. We are, talking we're about the ones that are going to be punished. Our that's cannot punish people serve be punished. This board we, is... We, we, we this might even want to buy some land out there where you live, where you live. Sir, <laughs> you might tell you, sir. And, and, and uh, move you're right out of order. Order. home. You're out of order, please. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. This board, don't go there. Go work. Don't go there. Go work. You're, you're out of order now, please. Okay. Look. No, you're out of order. No more, please. I can't say nothing else? No, sir. You're no. out of order, please. Okay. I think the neighborhood should be looked at. The whole this board has limited powers, and the only thing we're looking at is this particular option, the size, the roof pitch, and what he can put in. He can put it in there by right. We can't stop. We would ask the question. Please. About the other houses, I was trying to tell we you. Were, the question was asked. Did you go out there? Did you go out there? I wrote out there and look. Yes. You're making it worse on this side. You're making it worse, please. Okay. Any other questions? We've got a motion or a second. Please. Okay. Any other questions before I call the question? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Any other discussion before I call the question? Can I get a motion on this request? I motion that this request be denied. I second it. I have motion from Dr. Housel to request, I mean to deny the request as presented. I have second. Is there any other discussion? All in favor, please raise a hand. Hold it one, two, three, four. All opposed. We have a four two vote. Okay, the next case we'll call is the City of Aldosta, application 2014-07, Artis Herbalmas. Did I pronounce that correct? Okay. Any questions? I've got some questions. 
when this um, development first came up, I know there was something about, I remember reading something in the paper about the trees or certain amount of the trees were supposed to be left intact at the time mm -hmm. of development. Because this is mm -hmm. when all the trees were there. And of course all the trees were removed. Mm -hmm. And we they were replaced with the canopy trees, the oak trees. Mm -hmm. um, was there a reason given why those trees were removed? I'm not knowledgeable about that. Okay. I'm sorry. Because I guess I want to know if this was in the gist of plan from the very beginning to put these. That I can't speak for. I can only speak from a zoning standpoint when I reviewed the plans. I was not aware of the solar panels and the accessory structures. They were not shown on the plans. Now, whether there was any long range goals, that I'm not sure. And I know one of the reasons I read the report is that one of the reasons y'all recommended denial was that these canopy trees, they're going to get bigger. They're going to get bigger and they are not allowed to be removed right and they're going to interfere with the purpose of so the solar panel yes ma'am any other questions right now was there a discussion between the staff and the applicant concerning some of these alternatives that you presented we did have a pre-applicant dr urban is the design professional we did tell him that his staff more than likely would not support his request. And whether we talked about specific locations, whether it's on the roof or behind that, I don't know. Um, there are some notes in here that indicate that there were other areas that these panels could be placed on the property. Staff believes in this. Well, don't these panels provide two things, though? They provide solar energy and they provide shade for parking. So. If I were to go to this doctor's office, then I would park in shade rather than parking in baking sun. Do I look like my Is this what they don't look like in the Very similar. They don't look like you could drive under, between those posts. Okay. So you're driving underneath the post. <coughs> in it functions as like a car door. Okay. It's going to be this many? It's going to be just the full, it's proposed to be like to be shown on the side. But yes, we've got other columns going down. There's six of them off the property line? About, yes, sir. Any other questions, discussions at this time? Thank you, ma'am. Is anyone here in support of this application or is the applicant here and would like to give us information? My name is Jimmy Cohn. My office is located at 1806 Plum Street. Uh, I'm here along with uh, Dr. Bonus and also the uh, installation uh, guys here also that uh, puts these solar panels up. Uh, I have some uh, better photos uh, that actually you can tell that the parking under the uh Calvin Pass is around you, you can see the parking stripes and the bumper lines where you really can park up under them. And then uh, also this same company uh, has installed some of these at uh, at the college uh, behind the library. There's some photos there. Okay, looking at the center location, where would it come? Starting right there? Yeah, that would be right behind the curve. It's where the, the structural steel column would be. Okay, that would be the edge. Mm -hmm, right behind it. Because that curve is about five okay, feet right there. Mm -hmm. It would fall right there. It would start right there and go out this way. That's right. They would hang over the parking, cantilever over the parking. Thank you.
already been presented. We're just here to answer questions. So. I, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, part of the reason why they're asking for a variance is because they're too close to the street. Is that correct, Tracy? If they put them on the other side of the parking lot in front of the building, they would still be either in the front yard. They need to be either on the side or not, not near a public street or behind. Right. Well, their parking isn't that way when they built the building. It wasn't built that way, so not about that. Right. If they were to put solar panels as shown, the accessory structures as shown, it would either be back here or right here. Right. Well, that's not where the parking is, so. Right. This isn't like an accessory structure where it's some other thing that they're going to store something in it. This is for parking under to make shade for their plants. We understand. We understand. Well, it's a, it's a different kind of thing. We, we understand the solar nature. We do. Staff support solar nature. But the idea of having basically carports in front of the building, front of the building accessory structures. Somebody I'm saying they come from that new building. All right, question. The solar panels are for generating electricity, I'm assuming, to power the building. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. And, and that's, that is the use. It just happens to be, in this case, that you're trying to sell it as a carport. Yeah, they're not, they're not waterproof. I mean, if you, if you pull under one of them and it was raining, uh, they leak. They're not meant to be a waterproof. We, you know, take out of the equation the fact that you're going to park cars on that, That's not what we're dealing right. with. What we're dealing with is we got a structure on the front road side that is prohibited, and the, it, it, it's going to be right up next to the right of way, and that's what the city fathers are, are designing all this to try to say, look, we want buildings and structures a certain amount of distance from streets, and if we come in here and say, okay, we will let you put these structures in there, then who knows where this stops? Right. And particularly if they go to <coughs> Wyden Street. If they go to Wyden Street and all this kind of problems. Yeah, but they uh, could do that. I mean, that's, you know, the, you've got these monument signs and you've got light poles and all that that would be basically, you would be coming out any closer to the street than what these structures no, We're not coming out into the right away at all. Have y'all addressed the issue about the trees, the oak trees, the encanopy trees, or are you just kind of thinking, well, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> we'll worry about that. Yeah. You know? Well, we know the trees are going to present a problem, you know, because they will, as shade they grow, it. they will shade it. But that's just that's just part of it. That Dr. Your bonus, uh, you know, it'll it'll cut back on the power that he can generate. We've got another case, the one after this. I want to get ahead, yeah, but, but it's even more shaded than this side is because it does have a pure tree on it. Was an option considered to put the solar, I mean, seeing as how the solar is there to power the building, um, was an option looked at to put the solar on top of the roof of the building? Um, actually, the building has solar panels on it already. Okay. This is an addition okay. to, to the building, the ones that are on the building now. And there's no way to put them on the west side behind the building and on the south side up that side, which would then be code. I assume they would be code. I did some rough measurements of the detention area. It is, it is a potential. I will sign on the dotted line that if they do have There's more wiggle room in that detention area around the detention area than there is on the south side. Area room on the yeah. south side is the yeah. south side is a little close. Part of the problem there is the uh, the mature trees that are in the land that's behind us. It it already shades this building pretty substantially, so they would be practically useless behind the building because the building would shade them pretty extensively, and so would the mature pine tree. I think Dr. Bonus and, and the uh, other folks yeah. have some things they'd like to say. <laughs> I'm raising my hand. Yeah. 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 Is there anything you would like to have first off, name and address for the record? Uh, Greg Kelly, 495, Thornwood Trigger, Roswell, Georgia. Yes, yeah, yeah, so just for uh, my, my case, um, from my side of it, we, we do these installations. We did the uh, 
the installation of Mount Oscar. Um, a lot of treatment. We've got two big installs out there. We've done at the moment at State University. So we've worked in the area a lot. We've done a lot with farmers down here. For a doctor of wellness who loves solar for the good environmental part of it is the most important thing for this is for a shaded canopy for his walking for his patients. He has very sick patients at times. He wants to get them out of the sun. He wants to get them out of the rain. He wants to take good care of them. And that to me is very, very important. This is a very expensive feature. The benefit that he gets out of it for solar, for the production of power, doesn't really offset his cost. He wants to do something that he shows his patients that they really, that he cares about his patients, he cares about their health, he wants to protect them. People visiting him, they have oxygen masks, they have wheelchairs, he's got a, many, many petitions from his, all of his patients that they would like to have shaded canopies. It is a thing that is happening in the medical industry across the country. Medical clinics want shaded parking because they, I, I, I know I, you don't I, want to hear it because I it, buy your argument. Right. It's but very, very dealing, important. But we're not dealing with parking in front of the building. We're dealing with parking out from out to the street. Right. And that if, is very if that was if that was the case, if that was the major case, then we'd be talking about doing something on parking in front of the building. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, I had a quick question sort of on that same line, but to Tracy. Tracy, if the if the covered structures were moved to over the sidewalk in front of the building and actually covered and connected to the front of the building, would it still be viewed as an accessory structure? If they were attached to the building, they would be viewed as an addition rather than an accessory structure. So he, right, that's, that's the point I'm going at. If you put it on the building side and tie it to the building, then you will accomplish what you're trying to get us to buy, which is the patient want to be under the shade. And it also will satisfy because the meeting set back and it's not an accessory building because it's going to be attached to the building. A walkway, just a covered canopy that they walk under to get in, and that solves the problem. And we're not dealing with trying to cut city parking. And it can be over the parking spaces too. It can right. stick out from the building be attached to the building. That's why I asked to turn around and put it on the other side in the front, on that front part. But also, they would be attached. Yeah, I'm sorry. And they're also, too, there's a common sense question. Um, why would the patients be sitting in the car on the outside as opposed to going into the building where it's nice and cool? Well, when they come out, after they've been in there for a treatment or something and the car's been sitting out there for an hour or two, uh, hot Wednesday afternoon, they come out there, a car is 165 degrees. And that's
just and have these, the these ones here covered instead of having those ones there covered. I think the shade at the front of those would eliminate you know, the benefit of having it a solar canopy so you would just have to do a regular canopy. If the building will shade those um, it's a tall building actually, that's why we've got yeah. we weren't looking at that. Honestly, the whole building is like a two-story building. That was the first, that would have been the, the best <coughs> solution. But I'll be very sure this. But it's coming down the road about these trees. Right. Well, the thing and is these trees are going to, and I can see where that's headed, that when, when all of a sudden they're not generating solar power. The, these trees are going to go I remember when I said Bell Labs, the uh, uh, four stainless stainless uh, circle Bell Labs, Georgia. <clears throat> Actually, we were looking at different locations, uh, and uh, one thing that, if you look at this part from Oak, from North Oak Street, there is a that's a Bank of America. And actually, we have very tall pine trees, mm -hmm. so the shade is always there in the morning. So we really don't care about that that much because morning um, light will. Talking about the solar power part of this uh, um, structure, and this, uh, <clears throat> so in the morning we'll be kind of ready that uh, this uh, solar electricity will not be generated much in the morning, just because it has very tall, tall and grown pine trees here. So if these uh, trees will grow here and they will, you know, just it's okay because most of the sun is going to be like in the morning already is going to be coming from here and here. So it's south is here. And so they're, and they're going to be tilted a little bit like this. So that will work fine if we put close to the building. The shade already early afternoon will be going here. And I think still the patients will benefit a lot if we, if we put it here. The cars will not be heated that much, especially the second uh, building that we'll be going to be looking at. The patients are very sick. There are over 200. To, it's actually in that particular place like 100 patients almost. And all of them are disabled, they get the life-sustaining therapy. And when they come out very weak after the treatment, and they open the car, and the car is in the sun for five hours, because they get a four-hour treatment, with hooking up and everything, for like four and a half hours. We had a patient passing out to him from, you know, in the parking lot. So that would be also beneficial, I think. It's a green energy, which I'm very excited about that. And also providing the, the shade for the cars and sun protection from the sun from the rain because these panels will come up pretty close. It's not ideal from the rain, so maybe it's going to be a leak a little bit, but most of the rain, and there, the patients are very slow getting in and out. They have oxygen tanks many times, they, and, and when they get out, they get drenched in, in the rain totally sometimes. They come in, and for the treatment, they're just all wet. Here, until they come in and out, at least that time, they can be protected, and just to cross, you know, it's not that much of the Okay. And the trees, just on the trees, I know it's the case, but the sun comes up, the tree will block a little bit in the morning, but he's not worried about, he's already got some shade across the street. There's a, what they call a microinverter, which accounts for that. If there's shade on one panel, then if, if, if not on another one, then you're still getting the power of it. So we would put microinverters in and take into consideration the shade. <coughs> And it's really a very progressive idea. I mean, it's, it's happening. It's going to be beautiful. It looks great in Valdosta. I mean, in, uh, at the Valdosta State University. But well, Valdosta State University is not sitting <coughs> on Oak Street on the side of the street, which is what the city fathers are concerned about. Right, but it's a you know, very progressive. When people come thing. to our city and they see this, though, they go, hey, progressive people live here. Maybe we should locate our business here. Well, yeah. Dr. Gardner on, on what he's saying, and, I mean, but I also think that pretty much everything he said could be said for, it's the same thing could be said for Glenn Dick, I mean, you know, my grandma goes, you know, I mean, it's South Georgia, he's got hot cars, you know, I mean, I, I think. I'd love to have covered parking at Glenn Dick's. And I, and I, you know, it's coming, coming. I mean, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we're doing the uh, park book for Gulf Street, because the Gulf Street wants their handicap parking at their right. corporate headquarters. Everybody is saying we're going to protect you with. What I'm saying is, I like the progressive idea. I, I, I like to be part of, of being in a, at a pivot point where you know we say we want to grow and we want to take it to the next level in our community. And we 
want to be bigger and better and, and, and proactive with new technologies. And, you know, and I'll be honest with you, I, when I first started looking at this, I thought, you know, oh my gosh, that's going to be hideous. And, you know, I made a couple of internal comments that, you know, that just put it out of my mind. But, you know, after looking at this, I, I'm not as concerned about the aesthetics. If, if Dr. Bono put this in front of his building, and, it, and, and people can judge it however they want to. They can say, oh my God, that's hideous or whatever. So for me, it boils down to just sheerly being six foot off the property line, knowing how many people come in here month after month and we deny requests and put an accessory building in a backyard closer than 10 foot to a fence. And you know, so that's, that's my hang up on it. And I'd like for the board to share their comments on, on, on their feelings about us being essentially right on the property line with this and, and what effect long term is that going to have? Are we going to be viewed as being you know, proactive and, and better in our community or is this going to be something that could be a, a risk to vehicular traffic? Uh, what's, the, what's the effect it has on adjacent properties? Now I think pretty much everything down there now is all the residents are gone except for Moody Lady, right? Uh, there's a house immediately south and just about everything else is either commercial or it's for sale actually now. You're selling the house. You moved out. That's the one further or something like that. So I'm in. I mean, I want to be in the right So they're asking for a three foot variance or four foot variance. A lot of petitions for patients uh, signs, you know, it's just solar five hundred you know, here. It just, it, it, I, we were collecting 10 days on that many. And that's really. We have huge support from patients. Okay. Any other questions or discussions? I'm ready to make a motion. Okay. I make a motion that we approve.